Hi, in this particular slide I want to go over a number of new power laws that I've observed from looking at line, uh, line item profit analytic ranking reports for a lot of different distributors and a lot of different channels. Um, generally speaking, Pareto was right. He he was, remember he was the 1906 Italian economist. He kind of came out and said that 20% of the citizens had 80% of the land or wealth because it was an agricultural economy in those days. He did apparently anecdotally observe that 20% of the customers for shipping companies did generate about 80% of the sales. And that seems to be about right. However, when I've looked at ranking reports, by margin dollars, that seems like about 30% of the customers generate about 70% of the margin dollars, not as skewed as the 2080 rule. But when we look at customers ranked by net profit, we, for distributors anyway, we'll see maybe 20% of the customers will generate about 140% uh, and sometimes very skewed. I've seen as high as 200, but a, a lot of internal peak net profits. Now, part of why this number is so high is I'm going to jump ahead. The bottom 1% of the customers are actually destroying, on average, about 20% of the peak internal profit. So there's the cross-subsidy going on here between these two guys. Now, within the top 20% of the customers that are generating 140% of that profit, um, you know, I can build a case as to why 4% of all companies in mature industries are perpetual innovators. Uh, they are also known as gazelles by a guy named David Birch. He said they seem to generate 70% of the new jobs. I put new in quotes because they're not new jobs. When, when Walmart opens up a new super center and hires a lot of people, though they're creating jobs as far as Walmart's concerned, but for every person they hire, maybe one and a half people is getting laid off at two grocery store uh, stores that get closed down because they're being put out of business by a superior form of distribution, if you will. So to the economy, there's not net new jobs. Net new jobs come from industries that take new technology and create whole new uh, spaces. Uh, unfortunately, for example, for iPhones, most of those jobs that are being created are in China right now. But uh, at any rate, if we can find the intersection of most, let's say, let's say we look at the top, not 20%, but the top 5% of our customers who maybe generate 100% of our net profit. And within there, we can find some of their perpetual innovators. Now we ask the question of net present value. If we took the estimated net profit We'll be, we'll be making over the next five years from somebody who's growing four times faster than the economy or their industry, and then discount it to present value, we'd say, oh my gosh, these guys are enormously profitable. In fact, I would, I would argue say that less than 5% of all the active customers a distributor has right now could potentially generate 80% of all the future profit growth that any would-be distributor suppliers could get in that market space in the next five years. So unless you understand this concept or are hyper-focused on those kinds of customers with best service value propositions, you're not going to get it. But if you do, you'll get it because everybody else is too busy trying to be all things to way too many people. And that gets down to this next point, which is that 85% of all your active customers tend to be small little guys, and they're chronically small. If you give the test of what, how have they grown and innovated and changed in the last five years, and you say, you know what, not at all. They're just uh, the same old people, a little, little older, a little more tired, whine a little louder, want an extra five off kind of thing. And many of them have margin dollar contribution to the company that's less than the cost to serve. So we actually lose money, not a lot, but we lose a little money on them every year, and eventually they're going to go out of business. So the, the net present value of these customers is actually negative. Now, in theory, we could spin these guys off, and we could create a wholesale division or have an internet kind of catalog business. If we did that, there are pure play creatures out there, like Fastenal is what I would call a wholesale business model. Wholesale is not retail mall uh, cost per square foot and it's not deep warehouse district cost per square foot but it's in between it's a it's kind of a four-lane commercial highway you can see the fasten all sign you can sort of pull in a few parking spaces you go in it's a do-it-yourself help yourself kind of place it's more of kind of a convenience store for people who need parts and pieces and fasteners historically and there they, they they make a living by getting zillions of little customers to come in, and but on every customer they make money. 
because their service model cost is lower than the average margin contribution. So those kind of guys might find that only, you know, maybe 57, 60 percent of their customers maybe generate a net peak of 115 percent of their net profit. The bottom 40 only eat up 15, so 100 percent of the customers generate 100 percent of net profits. It's a, it's a, it's a different uh, business model altogether. And then the last one is the most powerful of all. Uh, for most distributors, it appears that, and I'm, I'm, I'm being generous here, or conservative, I should say, that five to ten percent of the active stockkeeping units are generating five percent, five hundred percent or more of the net profits. I mean, I have seen some where it's two, three percent of the SKUs are generating a thousand percent of the net profits. So it's very skewed. And and then at the other extreme, you've got some customer, some some SKUs that are enormously unprofitable. But once you understand which ones they are and why structure that way, you can fix them and then turn them into profitable. So these are new power laws, and what we want to do is, is when we try to renew our corporation, we don't want to jump in the river with both feet. We want to just take one little tiny small experimental step at a time, but we want to make sure that step has got huge upside potential as far as profit development, or certainly at least as far as learning is concerned. So let's, uh, let's carry on with these, these uh, power laws. Thank you.